Hey guys, so today I wanted to switch it up from the speed painting videos that I've been posting on YouTube lately and do a review of these Marie's watercolor and gouache for you. Um, each of these sets contains 18 colors. I purchased them from Jerry's Artorama online and they were only $9 per set. Um, so the reason that I want to talk about these is because I know there's a lot of people out there that are either looking to get into watercolor and they want to find something that's affordable but still has good quality to it or there's you know more professional artists like myself who would just like to have a more inexpensive watercolor that they can practice and work in um, but you know still have it perform fairly well. So in a little while, after I talk to you guys, we're going to go down to desk view. I'm going to do some swatches for you, um, talk a little bit about the differences in colors in these sets and the differences between the gouache and watercolor. So we will get to that in just a minute. First, um, I want to talk about my two favorite qualities about these paints, which is their vibrancy and their light fastness. So these paints are extremely vibrant, um, just really bright, wonderful colors and you'll be able to see that um, coming up here. And then probably the, the bigger component is the light fastness because it's really, really difficult to find a inexpensive watercolor, especially one that's only $9 that uh, has light fastness to it. Um, the reason this is important to me because, you know, as I mentioned, I do more professional work. So most of the time I'm using my, my Jell-O Mission Gold paints, whole bean paints, Winsor & Newton, um, but sometimes I like to just open up a sketchbook or maybe just do an experimental painting on an idea that I've had, but I'm not sure if it's going to turn out and I don't necessarily want to be using my more expensive products um, to test that idea. So that's when I like to have a uh, cheaper option that still performs really well. And if that piece does turn out and I absolutely love it, then if I'm painting with something that's also light fast, then I don't have to worry about the integrity of the piece over time. So if I decide that I want to hang it on the wall or sell it or whatever I want to do with it, I don't have to worry about um, the paints that I created it with. So with that being said, um, I just want to jump into some of the problems that I've had with other cheap watercolors. I was really hesitant to even buy these Marie's paints. I had seen them on the Jerry's Artorama site quite a few times. I almost purchased them, you know, more than once. And I had just ended up throwing out or giving away so many cheap paints because they were either chalky, they were muddy when you tried to blend them, they didn't have the pigment. It was just really frustrating, not to mention they didn't they weren't light fast. So finally I think I got these on sale for like five or six dollars and Jerry's Artorama is always running sales so I'm sure you could probably get these even cheaper than the nine dollars. Um, so I, I was like okay I'm just gonna go ahead and pick them up and I did and I'm glad I did. They are not uh, you know they are not the super high artist quality paints. They are not going to rival any of those higher brands that I, I mentioned that I normally like to use but if you're just starting out or you want something cheaper to work with on occasion they really are excellent in my opinion. The reason that I would advise against just going into Michael's or Hobby Lobby and uh, picking up those, you know, just a cheap set of, I think a lot of them have 30 paints for like $5. And those are the ones that I was kind of referencing when I said that they turned out chalky and muddy and whatnot, um, is because if, especially if you're just starting out, you will get the impression that you can't paint, that you're not good at it, that watercolors aren't for you. And it's really not your fault. It's because you don't have paints that are performing well. You know, you'll watch artists on YouTube and you'll be like, oh my gosh, they got such a, a vibrant blue shade. Um, or, you know, they got, they mixed just the perfect green and you go to your cheap set of paints and you try to do it and it just turns out horrible. It's, it doesn't look anything like what you wanted it to and you you know start to think, well, I just don't know what I'm doing, but it's not. It is really the quality of the paints if you're using that cheap of paints. So I really recommend um, investing in something like this that doesn't cost a whole lot more, um, if at all, anymore and um, try these out instead. I know my husband who you know has like 
no real background in art, hadn't watercolored since probably elementary school. Um, he sat down with some of my better paints and used them and was really impressed with his results because he too had just always thought, you know, I'm not very good at this because his only experience was with Crayola watercolors. So um, yeah, just a little piece of advice for those of you out there who are starting out. So now that we've gone over a few points about these, I'm going to put you guys down on desk view and we will talk about um, some other qualities of the paints, look at the swatches like I mentioned, how they blend and a variety of other things. All right, so now we are over at my desk and we are going to take a look at these Marie's paints in action. So first of all, we'll open them up, them up, the watercolor set here on the top and the gouache on the bottom. The first thing you'll notice is they look extremely similar and that's because they are. So in each set, you get 18 tubes. Each tube is 12 milliliters. Most of the colors are identical between the two sets. And I will show you that here. I already swatched out all of the colors for both sets. I have a book that I do swatches of all of my paints in so that I can reference it when needed. So here are those swatches, the watercolor and the gouache. Um, personally, I do not see a difference in the formulation of these paints. I believe that they are the same, just um, different printing on the tubes and the sets have a couple of different colors. As you'll see here, sap green and sap green, although they have the same name, are two completely different shades of green. You have um, this yellow mid-tone here, and over here in the watercolor you have both gamboge and this orange yellow. And to me this yellow mid-tone looks like it's probably in between these two shades. Then um, you also have violet in the watercolor and you have mauve in the gouache. Oh, and you also, you also have viridian in the gouache and deep green in the watercolor, which are similar but um, a little bit different. So the weak point of these sets is most definitely the, the green and brown tones. Uh, the greens and browns, as they dry, maybe you can see, they get a little bit chalky. Not nearly as bad as some of those um, other cheap sets that I was talking about earlier, but it is something to be aware of. I probably won't use the green and browns out of this set a whole lot um, myself. Aside from those, I am really pleased with a lot of the colors. I think that for the price, the blues, the purple tone, the pink and red, um, the yellows, all of that comes out nicely. I like that in the gouache you also get these two tubes of white since you would use more white in gouache painting than what you would in watercolor. However, I do not think that you need to purchase both sets. Had I known that these two sets were so extremely similar, I probably would have only purchased one, but it did work out okay for this video because then um, I get to show you guys that uh, they are more similar than they are different and you can avoid um, buying both sets like I did. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to move this out of the way. And here I have dotted onto this card some of the watercolor paints. Again, there's not really a difference between them that I could find. So um, the top dot is cerulean blue, and then the next one is rose, and the bottom one is violet. And I'm just going to paint these out and show you guys a little bit of what they look like. So I'll just grab a brush. So there's the blue shade on its own, this rose shade, and the purple. This purple is so vibrant. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of this blue, dot it here, and I'm going to take some of the rose and put it with that. 
See what a nice purple that makes? This is what I'm talking about when not not all of the colors blend extremely well, but um, a lot of them do, and far more of them blend well than what I found with other sets in this price range. And I'll show you the purple here too. Let me add a little more of this rose color to that. You get that beautiful um, bright red violet color. Hopefully you guys can see this well. I'll try and then move it up to give you a better view. All right, so now I would like to show you a painting that I did with these watercolors just to give you an idea of how they look. So going into my sketchbook, this painting here was done with the Marie's watercolor. I sketched the whole thing out in pen first and then I went in with some very light tones um, mixing you know purple pink and yellow within the flower itself and then uh, blue and green tones on the leaves. And I am really happy with how this painting came out. It's something that I would even consider repeating again outside of my sketchbook as a more finished piece. So it just shows you the possibility of, of what you can do with these paints. I hope that this video was informational for you guys. I hope that you know there's something you can take away from it. And if you're beginning in watercolor, um, I definitely recommend checking out these sets of paints. So I will see you guys again soon.